It's Jeff the maintenance guy. Um, had a interesting um, thing. I'm not an electrician by all means. I do know all about electricity. I install outlets. I know about TFIs and neutrals and grounds and all that. And now this makes sense. Um, so, late, a couple nights ago, late, um, around midnight, my roommate comes flying into my room saying, Jeff, there's something wrong with electricity. The house is on fire, blah, blah, blah. Got me all excited. Just about passed out. I woke up so fast. But anyway, yeah, it, it, there was smoke coming out of this thing, and I had a surge protector. Um, I took it to work, and I took it apart, so unfortunately, I can't show you. But there's two other surge protectors in this house that have blown up. <clears throat> and what, what caused this <clears throat> was a open neutral. So... Every electrician would know this. In this video, they're probably like, duh, yeah, well, that's what happened. Well, my roommate was drying clothes, so he was using a, the 220 circuit. So as he was using the 220 circuit, it was going through either the A phase or the B phase in my panel meter and sending that 240 back into these surge protectors. Which, this one wasn't even plugged up at the time. This one's brand new. But it sent it through the surge protector. This was on the back of our living room TV um, to uh, protect electronics from lightning strikes or whatever. But you know what? They do do their job, but there's a problem with these. They're somewhat of a fire hazard. This thing caught fire. It caught the plastic part. Of the wire management system on fire on the back of the TV. Uh, melted plastics could drip onto your carpet and then uh, catch carpet on fire or whatever. This was all caused because the power line, which here's the section that JEA cut off of it. That's the fresh stuff and it's made out of seven strand aluminum. Was just gone. Corroded. Bye bye. And that finally snapped. And when that did, it started using, guess what it's going to try to find to use as a neutral then? Because there is another wire in your house. You might not know this. It goes back to the pole and it gets grounded. The ground also is connected to the neutral on the pole. What wire is that? Hmm. Coaxial cable. Coaxial cable will act as a neutral because it's going back to that pole and it's trying to get back to that neutral. So, not only did four of these blow up in my house, I lost a cat dish that has like a little fountain. I don't care about that. Um, this TV here, um, apparently, had a cable box connected to it. This was connected with no surge protector. It's gone. That The box does work still, but it, it's still. If I had one of these on there, I don't think it would have mattered because voltage is now going through my coax cable. Because that's it try to find a neutral, and now something's messed up with it. I'm getting shocked when I try to undo the cable wire from it and stuff like that um, and everything is just screwed up right now it's unbelievable a couple phone chargers uh, are okay because they do run on 110 or 240 um, if you a real quick tip if you see um, you turn on a dryer for instance we'll go We'll go over here, and this is my dryer room. You gotta excuse it; it's kind of messy, but we have a nice dryer. I mean, Maytag, and just excuse all the junk on top of it. But used to this light, which is regular incandescent light. I like to have it around now. But you you could turn it on, and then when you hit this, that light would be like, wow, like bright as hell. 
If you see that when you're turning on a coffee maker, a microwave, and your lights are dimming, you're playing music with a power sub or something, and your lights are dimming, you might want to look into a open neutral as being the problem because, um, again, Maytag washer, I got some stuff in there. Um, but every time this would oscillate, this light, this this light up here would just go crazy, like bright, dim, bright, dim. Every time it turned on, off, on, off to do the oscillations. Um, this nightlight, <laughs> this nightlight still works actually. <laughs> I don't know how, but we unplugged everything in the house when this started uh, blowing up. And also in in here, I have a sub panel. Uh, because this is an addition to the house and this is where the meter used to be but this is no longer the meter even though it does it does work you'll see it fly by here in a second air conditions on there it goes so kind of can monitor my own my own stuff from right here you know uh, air conditioning is in here as well and conduits go into various they kind of just put them in a wall it's ghetto I don't know but it's a utility room I don't mind it I had to put a T on here and I made it long enough so while I'm doing laundry I can just I can not uh, this is a tip for people that call the AC company out here and all they do is stick some CO2 or nitrogen in here and blow out their lines you could take a piece of PVC about this long I don't know about as long as my hand and guess what you're going to use this for? You're going to pour bleach inside of this and then pour it into there and put it on once a month. And you're probably not going to have any clogs. If you're going to have clogs, then it's going to be from here to here. And you can you can blow that back out through that way, but it's probably going to come back and... Oops, my finger's in the way. Come back and uh, haunt you, so... Yeah, a little mini tour of my house. My house is kind of messy right now, so there's stuff everywhere. I'm a bachelor. I don't care. I'm not trained yet, ladies. Um, so surge protectors. What was plugged in here is not damaged, so it did do its job. The problem I have with it is, I was thinking of ways, you know. I probably need to get a better quality surge protector or APC, something that's going to monitor the voltage going in there and cut it off. Just not let it work at all until the problem is solved. It's probably what I need to do, and I'm looking into that, actually. But then I thought, well, heck, what if this was on the carpet? You know, then I, then I got the idea, well, you know, they give you these little hanger things. We're going to hang it up. And this, luckily, this was on the back of the TV on the on a metal pole. That was, uh, yeah, melted the side there, too. I didn't see that. Um, so, yeah, you can see all the way through the dang thing. <laughs> anyway, so this was mel uh, mounted to a pole. And it, um, luckily, the back was facing towards that metal pole. So, you know. It, the fire was kind of contained, but what if that was on the carpet or something? Then I thought, well, what if all this melted plastic dripped on fire on, on the carpet, you know? So it doesn't matter where you put it. These things are, I think these things are freaking worse for, I mean, it protects. It protected. I mean, I, I guess it did. I don't know. I mean, TVs, I think, can run on 240 volts, so. Um... I don't know. But, uh, yeah, they feed you a whole bunch of bull crap. 330 volts. My ass. I don't have that much coming in here, and there's no way that 330 volts is even going to come from the power pole. But then again, I'm not an electrician, so I'm going to say that it could. 240 volts went through this and blew it up. And I've seen these go out at 200 volts. So, you know, you're only looking at, 
you know, not much to blow these up. So be careful with these. Um, yes, they're supposed to protect from lightning strikes and stuff, but I don't think they're going to do it. Can't protect from 200 volts. Jeff the maintenance guy having a wonderful day at my house, figuring out all this crap and getting my stuff back working. Y'all have a great day. Stay safe.